Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Witcher 3. Let's keep on chugging along here. We got a place of interest just up there. We're going to focus this episode mainly on some of these. Once, an, once again, another Duties of the Witcher episode. This one is um, part 40, or as I like to call them, Act 40. And uh, to maybe the 0.001% of you who don't understand Roman numerals, that is XL. Uh, doesn't mean extra large. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we got some nice little banditos here. Get rid of these archers first. Oh, wow. Just ended that guy really quickly. Great. Alright. These guys aren't so hard. Igni actually is just so overpowered against bandits. It's crazy. <laughs> oh man, that guy just likes to block. And that guy with the spear, just dead. You know. What the heck with that? Did he just like flick me off or something? I don't know. <laughs> Alright, well, he's dead now. I guess we'll never know. Let's see what we got. Uh, oh wow, one of these guys just dropped an entire chicken. Um, but no, I won't take that. I'm not going to bother taking those things either. We are kind of at the point of the game where I don't need food. I don't really need a whole lot of money anymore. Just things that are lightweight and efficient in terms of uh, money conversion. Like, you know, those 100 crowns. Infused crystal. Uh, yeah, that one is fine. It weighs 12, but whatever. And uh, we got a journal written on Sowhide. Sowhide. Okay. Day one, Philibert sent us to collect su supplies from the Bassin farm. I stayed with most of the lads in camp as always, and sent a few to go strike a deal with Stuart. Hubert derides a reasonable chap, never gave us trouble about taking supplies before, so it seems we're in for an easy job. Not like hunting flying monsters or lying in wait for caravans waiting down the road. Day two, Nikolai and Pablo Gaff have not returned. Something stinks and it's not my foot wraps. I'm taking charge and leading a group to see what's going on. If those peasants at Bassin have done something to my men, I'll reduce that farm to moldering ashes. Day 3, the farm's been demolished, but no sign of Pablo or Nikolai. We only found two hayseeds. I'll take them back to camp for questioning. Both howl like madmen and mumble constantly about some werewolf. They'll cool their heels in a cage for a while. Maybe get more talkative and wear the bum blazes are my men. Alright. Uh, I mean, I don't feel like it was so necessary for this bandit to just write down all of that on hide. It doesn't seem particularly important, but hey, I guess the guy just wants to write some stuff and, you know, good good on him. <laughs> if you ignore the fact that he's a lowly bandit who <laughs> robs caravans and stuff, you know, he's a quite the well-read guy. So let's keep on going here. We got another place of interest up here. Have we read... Oh, oh no, there are more of these notice boards. I think that is the last one, as a matter of fact. Yeah, there should be. Mm, unless there's one hidden in Bulk Lair somewhere, but yeah, this one up here is the last notice board, and once we, we read that, that should unlock all of the remaining places of interest here in Tucson. I mean, like, unlock them on, on the map. Um, they're technically always unlocked. It's, you just have to find them if you don't read the notice board first. Uh, okay. Got some bad guests here. Oh boy. These are like very unfriendly wolves. Yeah, as you can see from the damage I'm taking. <laughs> like quite a lot of these too. I'm not sure why they're just a bunch of spectral dogs, you know, wandering around Tucson. I really need to be careful because I'm going to die. When they pass through me like that, uh, kind of hard to block and dodge. Jesus! And they take my stamina too. Okay, so that's one more. Let's see here. Definitely not in the interest of dying here, so <laughs> let me just back off a little bit. Uh, man, let my recovery do its thing. I don't know why I had so many problems with this particular group of bad guests. They usually don't give me this much trouble. Come on. Oh god. Okay, you know what? I, I just need to run here. I'm not confident enough. Like, I could probably time one of my parries to not take any damage from this thing, but 
I don't really trust myself right now. Alright, whew. Well, that was closer than it needed to be. Let me just save. <laughs> and then I'm going to go back to kill, kill this last one. Because seriously, what the heck was up with these? I'm pretty sure I'm blocking at the right times. It's just... I'm not, I don't know. I don't know if that uh, attack that they have go through armor or what it is. Or maybe I'm just not blocking at the right time. You know, that, that could be it too. Alright, so loot these. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button to loot all. Oh my goodness. I've been playing too many other games. <laughs> the Witcher 3 is one of those oddities where the triangle button is the loot all button. In every other kind of RPG I've played, it's been the square button. Um, and by every other, I just mean like Elder Scrolls and the Divinity series. Okay, so there's a monster nest here, and I think I saw a fork tail just flying around. Yeah, there it is. This shouldn't be too bad, right? Let me go ahead and maybe apply one of my poison oils. I'm not really even 100% sure if these guys can be poisoned because fork tails, according to lore, um, are very similar to kind of basilisks in the way they attack, and uh, basilisks like to spit poison. Doesn't mean they can't be poisoned themselves, though. All right, here we go. Oh wow, this guy jumped around there for a second, and he's green. <laughs> this might be the first time we've seen a green fork tail. Interesting. Come on. All right, here we go. I'm gonna fight this guy inside my Yurden. Just safer that way. Wait for my armor to charge up a little bit, and then I think I'm gonna unleash a. Uh... Let's see. Let's unleash a hard attack, like hard charge onto my weapon. <laughs> eh, yeah, that worked. You see, he's frozen there. Um, it's kind of cool. It's from my armor set bonus effect. If you didn't know. Okay, let's try that again. Maybe I can freeze it. Come on. Oh, okay. I was gonna see if another Ard would just freeze it from the chill, but he just died, so whatever. <laughs> Alright. nest. Need to destroy it. And what oh, what? Come on. There we go. Some scales, some skulls, which is very interesting. I mean, <laughs> Actually, we can see these skulls right down here, but I don't think we've looted skulls from other monster nests before. Alright, so I believe those are all of the points of interest in this area. I think I'm going to have to go over there, and we'll probably... Eh, yeah, we'll do these two. Next up. Let's get on with it. Um, I wonder why there isn't kind of like a fast travel point around here, you know, like maybe up here? I don't think there is because we've been up there before and didn't really see anything, so... Oh well. Whew. So, how are you guys go doing today? <laughs> I just got off work and I was like... Time for some Witcher action. Oh, water hag, huh? Alright. Sometimes I feel like the series is going a little too slowly. But then again, um, this is a very kind of a slow game. It's not something that you can just sit down one afternoon and be like, I'm gonna play and finish The Witcher 3 today. <laughs> That's not how it works. Jeez, this water hag is giving me some trouble. There we go. And we are on what? Episode 100 and... What is this? Like 63? 64? No, I think it's 63. Um, we can probably look forward to seeing, I don't know, another 20 or 30 more episodes of this series. To be honest, I don't really know what I'm going to do after I finish the series. Um, as some of you may know, this channel of mine has kind of been on and off over the years. Uh, I, I start things and then I just like don't really commit to them. I never really finish them. 
Which, uh, yeah, I guess it's mostly my fault, but with the way mm, my lifestyle is, sometimes uh, I'm just like too tired to record any videos after I get off from work, and then if I miss a couple of days, I just kind of get out of the mood of doing YouTube videos again, and yeah, it's... And I know it's like a really bi bad mindset, and, but I'll try to change that. I mean, after this series is over, um, I'm probably going to go back to doing some of what I used to do on this channel. Like, if you look back on some of my older videos, not that I have that many of them, but I have um, some Final Fantasy content on this channel. I think I might go back to doing that, which, uh, yeah, which brings me to the whole like Final Fantasy VII remake that's coming out. Um, later this year, in about a couple of months, um, we are in uh, February of 2020 right now. Oh my god, I was going to say 2019, but no, it's 2020 now. Um, okay, let me see what we have here. Oh, this uh, place of interest wasn't actually marked on our map, which means this could have been something that we could have unlocked uh, with another notice What's board. Now, what now? Oh my goodness, look at this. Uh, yeah, let's just hop down there. Looks like these bandits have taken this woman captive. Well, we're gonna change that. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. I just set her on fire. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, lady. I didn't mean to do that, but you were kind of in the, in the way. Alright, there you go. Are you safe now? Or are there more of them? Thank you, noble knight. I'd ventured north in search of herbs for a new flavored wine. When suddenly... Calm down, it's over. The bang titlers kidnapped me. In hopes of collecting a ransom, I'm sure. But with Master Liam's troubles, he never could have paid them. Ah, but I'm free and safe, thanks to you. Should you need any herbs, I've a hearty stock at the Coronata. Will you walk me there? Um, as much as I really want to and be a gentleman about it, I don't really want to uh, get out of this area right now. You know what? Uh, you do your thing and I will meet up with you in Coronata some other time. Need to look around here some more, but I'll be sure to stop by if I'm ever in the area. I shall be waiting. All right, great. So, yeah, the reason I'm not accompanying her, uh, well, actually two reasons. One, I, I don't want to kind of like get uh, get away from this place because I'm trying to do something here. And two, I know somewhere down the line there will be a side quest where she is going to be. So, uh, yeah, we can get there later. So one of these bandits actually dropped a letter. I'll be short and to the point. You are to grab Liam's herbalist and keep him from finishing production of that new wine. Leave the girl alone till I send more orders. Don't mess this up, you bum-brained beetroot. <laughs> v. Okay. Looks like they were kind of successful, but... Only three lowly bandits. What were they going to do against the Witcher? Oh god, I almost... Hmm. Is there anything down there? Let's take a look. Oh, it's like a very dark cave area. Uh... Yeah, no, there's nothing down here. Well, luckily, we can just get up from here. And hop. Okay, good. Oh, nice little roll to get up here. Okay, great. Moving on now. Hmm. Uh, so yes, as I was saying, not really quite sure what I'm going to do after finish this, finishing this Witcher 3 series. I mean, I have at this point been working on this for almost a year. By the time we finish this series, it's going to be just about a year. Like, that's actually really crazy if you think about it, right? I mean, I um, for the most part, like, yeah, I've taken breaks here and there from this series, but I never really stopped uploading these. Um, you know, when I record, I record a whole bunch of videos at once. And then I kind of just like upload them bit at a time because, you know, it takes some rendering time. It takes some, a little bit of editing time. I don't do a whole lot of editing on these videos. But, you know, Let's go. 
Oh, jeez, what the heck? Wait a minute. <laughs> I kind of been following that 3D marker and I know it's not there. <laughs> okay, so that marker is a little glitchy, which is fine. Oh! Oh my goodness! Rock trolls in the wild, really? Oh, this is cool. We rarely get to fight these guys, like, out in the open like this. Oh, okay, this is, this is cool. To try not to get myself killed at this point. Oh man, they are kind of strong, aren't they? Um, let's take out some of my bolts here. And we'll start with... Ugh! This guy over here. <laughs> oh jeez. Raw trolls can be a little scary sometimes because they do have that charging attack that he's going to do right here. Uh, yeah, if we don't axie him out of it, then they can be a little scary, but... Sometimes we can just kind of run away from them, oh, and try not to take a big hit. Damn it. Okay, they are pretty weak to fire. Oh, jeez, yeah, that's exactly what I meant. These trolls, they they do that, and uh, yep, yeah, it's just like any other charging attack. Uh, it could hit you multiple times, and it's not a good idea to stand in their path. Okay, let's go ahead and finish this one off. And we'll work on the other one, maybe. Come on. There we go. Okay, now that is just one more. Should be pretty easy to deal with. Actually, you can kind of get them stuck in the loop. Um, they do this, and then all you have to do is kind of back off from the headbutt, and then you can just attack them. Um, come on, come but you have to keep up the attack in order to do that, which I didn't do. Go. Boom. Oh my god. Like, once this Erendite gets charged up, it does so much damage, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It does massively increase our critical hit chance. That's why we were doing so much. Got a troll mutagen, some livers, some brains, you know, all the good stuff. Okay. Let's not follow that 3D marker and just follow the one on my mini map. What the heck? It, it actually got me so off course. How did that happen? <laughs> wow. Alright. In the wilderness of Tucson, anything can happen. I mean, those two rock trolls, they were kind of just out in the middle of nowhere. There's really no reason to ever have gone over there, right? I mean, there's no other place of interest over there. There's no side quest that puts you over there. Oh! <laughs> and, uh, yeah, unless you make the conscious choice to expo explore in that very, you know, remote corner of Tucson, you wouldn't have even run across those rock holes, which I find very interesting. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I made some very poor attempts to block this panther's hits, but luckily for us, Quinn and our heavy armor was able to mitigate most of the damage. Oh, what do we have here? Orders for Calvin. Why is there raw meat on this guy? Ugh. That is just not decent at all. Calvin, you know I like you unless the rest of this lot. You've got a good head on your shoulders, but this thing about a panther, seriously lad? You've adopted a diddling panther? A few of our men came back to camp with their bums so bitten, they'll have to do-do standing up for weeks, and the very thought of going back on patrol has them shaking so hard their seams burst. This can't go on. Heard you've even gone so daffy as to give it a name. Hobbs the panther? You're completely off your nut, aren't you? Oh man, we just killed Hobbs the panther. <laughs> Now concentrate, because I don't feel like repeating this. The lad who brought you this letter is carrying a hefty coin pouch. That's the lion's share, no bleeding pun intended, of the loot from our last job. The pouch is yours, but you take that overgrown kitty somewhere out in the wilderness and slit its throat. Simple enough? For the sum you're getting from me, you'll buy yourself two pure-blooded greyhounds and we can forget the whole thing. That's me being generous. Don't make me change tasks, Stragon. It looks like this guy was doing what he set out to do, you know, releasing this panther into the wilderness, but uh, it looks like uh, <laughs> at the last second, this panther decided to not be a nice kitty anymore and just, you know, murdered him. Still a little worrisome though why there were some raw meat on this one dude, but, but hey, hmm. at least for this one time, uh, that place of interest wasn't uh, some bandits. 
just a panther. Okay. So we're going on to uh, this last one over here. Oof. Became nighttime like super quickly. So what have we here? Oh. Oh, we've already been here before. Okay. Uh, no, that's not the place of interest. It's this one. And look at this. <laughs> this 3D marker is just... It's, it's telling me to go literally into the sky. <laughs> it's definitely a little glitchy. Oh, what do we know? Bandits again. Yes. At this point... Shouldn't have any problems killing just a bunch of humans. Come on now. Let's just die like the good little bandits you are. Oh, did I not kill that archer? Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Consider that a mistake I won't be making anymore. <laughs> there we go. Easy peasy. Oh, I'll take that pepper vodka. I think that's about it. And which one of you guys has that note for me? <laughs> I know that every single place of interest here in Tucson has one of these for me to read. I actually really enjoy reading them. Like, uh, I don't know how many of you guys are listening to them, but, you know, like, reading these is kind of fun. It gives some context to whatever these bandits were doing here. So, unfinished report. As, your, as per your orders, Philibert, we joined Conrad Vate's expedition. A truly dense fool, that one. Set out from Cara Vista, meaning to reach Land Exeter on his own. And best part is, he wasn't going to do any trading along the way. Said he'd made a bet with some powers that could reach his goal in less than 80 days. <laughs> Around the world in 80 days? Is that what this is? Land Exeter is the capital of Povis, I believe. It's like the, northern, the northernmost country on the continent. His wagon was choke full of supplies, along with an altogether weighty trunk of Nilfgaardian florins attached to the coach box. We drank and ate all night at the pheasantry on his coin. I've still got heartburn. Didn't hesitate a moment before agreeing to let us join him on his journey. Our suggestion, suggestion to pitch camp outside the city didn't raise the slightest suspicion. Near finished the job without even getting our hands dirty. But alas, Zuizan swung the hammer a bit too weakly. Skull didn't crack at once, and even though the Cretan was drunk as a lord, he howled bloody murder and spooked the horses. To make things worse, they were already harnessed, so they dragged the wagon straight into the lake. We're eager to get the blazes out of this quick as possible, because this place is crawling with those bleeding knight knights errant and duco guardsmen. But as if out of spite, the wagons got stuck in the mud. A large ink blot rendered the rest of the report illegible. And <laughs> there it is. Around the world, in eight days. <laughs> nice. Did I say eight days in that note? Because I swore I read 80. Oh, wait a minute. I have to check this. Did I just read 80 just unconsciously? <laughs> uh, oh, no. This one here. Wait. What? No, this one. Okay. No, not this one. What? Where does it go? Is it this one? No, I did say 80 days. <laughs> I guess they just died on the eighth day. Is that how it is? <laughs> Probably. Um, okay, so, yeah, this, this wagon just, like, got dragged away. Oh, here we have another one. Journal from a journey around the world. Oh, this could be interesting. First day of the expedition, I, Conrad Vate, shall do the impossible. In 80 days, I shall traverse the entire continent from Caravista to Land Exeter. I spit upon danger and hold in the highest contempt all the small-minded folk who predict catastrophe and failure. I shall prove to my adversaries that be betting against me was the greatest mistake of their lives, a mistake for which they shall pay dearly and in Nilfgaardian florins. Sixth day of the expedition. I am still in Beauclair to keep to my pre-established plan. I should have passed the city by altogether, for I am already two days behind. But blast it all, my rear is about to fall off from bouncing on that infernal wagon bench. I've reached my limit of hard tack and dried pork. I've earned a bit of luxury, so it's time to visit the famed pheasantry. Eighth day of the expedition. I made some of new friends in the pheasantry. 
Kindred lovers of adventure, all, they caught on at once the idea behind my expedition and decided to join me. Tomorrow we embark together. Yazui then, one of my new companions, suggested we leave the city at once and pitch camp outside Beauclair. There we shall be able to conduct a thorough inspection of my supplies and prepare for the journey onward. Eighth day of the expedition evening, we have made our provision, provisory uh, by Volwak? Oh, that's a weird word. Everything was examined, examined, my funds counted to the last copper. Zui then loaded everything onto a wagon and prepared the horses. I now sit by the fire, drinking Estest and enjoying an evening of relaxation. <laughs> Life is beautiful. Oh yeah, from the looks of it, he actually got ran over by his own wagon and just died. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, I don't want to say funny, but it's pretty funny. Okay. Let's see what was in this dude's wagon here. Oh! Still some guys alive trying to, uh... Lost your nerve. Loot this wagon. Wow. So this didn't happen very long ago, did it? Okay, so that guy is dead. And look at that. This guy barely got the chance to move. Actually, I'm telling you. Pretty good. Like, the thing about Vanilla Witcher 3 is, right, like, some signs are just so clearly better, better than other signs. For example, Quinn is almost universally better than Yurden in Vanilla Witcher 3, at least for boss fights. But in this game, or in this mod, every sign is kind of just as useful as uh, any other. That's really cool. I mean, actually not so much for bosses, but hey. They're very useful in uh, certain situations. So, uh, this guy doesn't really have that much in his little wagon. <laughs> Just some necklaces. You'd think he would be carrying more supplies with him. You know, supplies for a journey ahead. He does still have 72 days left to go in his expedition, and yet... All he brought with him is just like, some necklaces, <laughs> some leathers. Not a very well-prepared, uh, expeditionist, if you ask me. Okay, so let's keep on going here. Um, I do really want to just like wait out this night time Because not only is it not quite as pretty as the morning time. It's also a little harder to see hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like being in a cave all the time. Let me see Yeah, and then activating witcher vision is like the bright parts are too bright. This, this just hurts my eyes Well, whatever can't really be bothered to pass any time right now. So let's just keep going. Alright, trading post. Oh. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of people here. Okay. Um, you know what? Have we talked to these people yet? Because I'm pretty sure this place was all just like ransacked and completely destroyed the last time we came through here. Ah, yeah, it's because of that uh, one basilisk, huh? The one that we decided to kill. Is it new armor you desire? Or do you wish your old set refurbished, repaired? Hmm, yeah, so we haven't really talked to these people before. Do you get any customers around here? How about that? Kill a basilisk and trade blossoms. Get a lot of customers in these wilds? Not many, true. <laughs> but nor is there much competition. Got it. Enjoying your status as a monopolist? One could put it thus, if one wished me ill. Hmm. I'm not really sure what Geralt was trying to say there. Show me what you have in stock. Alright, what does this guy have? Actually, I'm not so interested in what he has. I just want to sell off what I have here. Um, let's see. Eh, no, these things don't really sell for a lot to him. Okay, I didn't really have much anyway. So long. So long. While I'm here, I might as well just use this workbench. Yep, I've already sharpened my weapons earlier, actually. Let's just do it again. Yeah, why not? Hmm. What are these people up to? Wow, look at this. They have, like, this little tavern set up here, too. I cannot hold my tools. All right, then. Let's keep on going. Next destination. 
That will be... Oh, yeah. Look at all these places of interest. <laughs> Feeling good about this. Okay, let's start with this one over here. Um, yeah, I guess we're going right to uh, Corvo Bianco again. All right, you know what? Now that we're back home, I think I'm going to rest up till morning. Yeah, refresh those buffs. And maybe fix this lousy music that's been playing. All right, let's go to 6 a.m. Yeah, I don't know what it is with two song likes. Oh my god, that music. Every time this music starts, it just doesn't end. <laughs> Even a horse hmm. Hold on, maybe maybe I can fix this. Give me one Ow! second here. Okay, here we go. Let's keep going. I, work up to my I actually... I don't know. I don't know if the music here is supposed to be like this. I just... I almost remember the Tucson music being different. <laughs> I know we've been here for a while, but still. It felt more upbeat than this. I mean, you probably can't hear it right now because it's really, really quiet. Let me just shut up for a second. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's ridiculously quiet. Plus, I do have my background music in this game set pretty low. So it is very difficult to hear unless you turn up the, the volume. But if you do turn up the volume, my voice becomes really loud. I, I understand that. It's mainly because uh, sometimes the combat music in this game gets pretty loud. It gets um, disproportionately loud compared to some of the uh, overworld music. Like right now, it's very easy to hear the combat music, but it might not be as easy to hear just the traveling around music, you know? Okay, here we go. Got some... Big centipedes. Giant centipedes, if you will. Gotta get them into the Yurden trap. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Get trapped. Come on, kill it. Nice. Okay. One more. Oh. Ah, oh, damn. Almost dodged that one. Oh, my God. Hate these things. Oh, here we go. Ah, damn it! I was so close! <laughs> oh my god. If you don't kill it in that one stun time, it gets really difficult to just kill it all together because it doesn't... It doesn't like to come back to your to your Yurden trap, you know what I mean? It just likes to stay at a distance and just spit stuff at you. Which I don't really care for. Here we go. Okay. Just die to the Yurden damage. Okay, that works. Kind of like in the exact same spot his buddy died to, which is kind of nice. Now I can loot both of them at the same time. Yeah, there we go. And uh, the game Giant calls spawning ground. Huh. Should destroy it. The game calls these places of interest uh, vineyard infections, I think, which is just like a fancy way of saying monsters' nests. Okay. Um, yeah. So a bunch of stuff. That's cool. We. Uh... I... Thank you. Okay, so, yep, got the appreciation of the local peoples. Very good. Let's move on. Hey, there's a nice errand right here. Where, where, where were you when I was fighting those centipedes? <laughs> uh, you know, they call themselves knights, but really, they're just—I don't know what they are. They are knights errant, which is not to be confused with errant knights. Very different things. Hmm. Okay. Wow. This place is really, really pretty. Yeah, I, I like this little creek. It's not really big enough to be a river. All right, what's happening here? Oh, another vintner's contract. Hey, Very good. Here, please. I do like doing oh, these. Some interesting monsters usually. Wanted to talk? I did, for we're neck deep in trouble of the spider kind. 
Need a maid with a broom, not a witcher. You fail to <laughs> understand. These are huge. The size of pigs or dogs. Black and hairy, spewing webs. Mm -hmm. Not talking about spiders then. Talking about arachnomorphs. Call them what you will. You must smash the rogues, will you? Those caves would be prime barrel storage were it not for the beasts. All right, uh, arachnomorphs, not so bad. They're actually some of the easier enemies in this game once you understand how to take them on. Uh, let's talk about how much this guy is going to give me. First things first, need to talk about my reward. Yep, that is always first. And these guys, as I understand it, can be pretty generous. So let's push them, you know, to a 240, see if you'll pay that amount. Uh, oh. Not an amount I can afford. Perhaps a modest reduction. Okay, yeah. so it looks like this guy is not as generous as the other Vintner's contractors. Uh, let's say 190? I knew we okay. would agree terms. I mean, a 50 crown difference, that's hardly anything. Let's do it. Arachnomorphs don't look much like bunnies, but they sure breed like them. Best nip the problem in the bud. I'll look into it. <laughs> breed like bunnies. You know, given how big these arachnomorphs are, I can't imagine them being like a huge problem immediately. They, they might become problems, you know, a few years down the road, but I don't think anything can grow to that size, like, that quickly. Drink. Still, drink. they are just pests after all. Oh, what's in here? Knight's Errant Saddle, okay. Alright, I definitely see a lot of enemies on my minimap already. Oh, jeez, okay. I mean, I say they're not the, like, hardest thing to handle, but still. A bunch of them all together like that <laughs> in a narrow corridor. That even makes a Geralt like me. A Geralt like me? A Witcher like Geralt. <laughs> Nervous. Oh my goodness. Okay. Okay, here we go. Actually, there's a pretty good number on them. And then I can. Whoa! Seriously, guys. I'm just trying to get in here. Uh oh. Okay. Wow. They're really just like breaking through my guard. But the good thing is, uh, because we're kind of in a very narrow cor corridor, they don't have a lot of places to escape to, so. You know what arachnomorphs like to do best is it's just like running away from you and then trying to uh, strike at the right opportunity, but this environment doesn't exactly suit running away, so. Pretty good for us. Oh wow, this is like a big one. Okay, let's put down a yard in here. Ah, no! Okay, lock it. Wow. Even inside the yard, they skitter pretty fast. <laughs> Whoa, I did not even notice how much damage I was taking. Huh. Moving on. Oh, jeez. This place is kind of dark. I wonder if it's just uh, all arachnomorphs down here, or is there something a little scarier deeper inside the tunnel? Guess we'll have to find out. Okay. Oh, hello. <laughs> Not liking that fire, are ya? Oh, is that it? The quest updated. Oh, I think that's it. Hmm. Well, that wasn't very impressive. Maybe if we go a little bit deeper, there's something... Ooh, oh, check this out. Oh my god, it's another one of those posters saying to raise your prices for The Witcher. <laughs> Damn it. Um, and there's a dead body in here as well. What does this guy have? Oh, look at this. A bunch of, like, random alchemy ingredients. Okay. Alright, and this just, like, loops back out. Awesome. Where is that contractor? Uh, wait a minute. Um. Where do you go? Ooh. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, is this guy right here? Oh, okay. Any tidings? All taken care of. Went inside and cleaned up. Thank the gods. 
And you too, of course. 190 crowns, just like we agreed. Okay. Time for some small talk, maybe? Wine trade. Been at it for a while? Not terribly long, to be candid. I apprenticed to be an alchemist, but proportions were never my strong suit. So I took to trading in wines. More pleasant, I must say. One drinks on the job, and no one ever complains. Makes sense. And the world's always a bit more bearable on a buzz. Hey, well said, Geralt. Very well said. I was looking to buy something. Maybe sell something, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm not much of a drinker myself, but I can certainly understand the sentiment. Uh, okay, so this guy sells these alcohests. I've been trying to stock up on these, you know, just for, like, general crafting stuff. Time I got back on the path. So long. Back on the path we go. <laughs> okay, let's go. Um, let's move on to... Oh, what is this? Big Game Hunter. Oh, there's actually a... Huh, which side quest was this? Big game hunter. Um, okay, I guess it's something that we picked up from a notice board somewhere. Hmm, okay. Let's just do this one then. Lads, I find your concern touching. I do. Yet I've long awaited this day. So you must forgive me, but I shall go through with it as planned. Ah, it seems my guide has arrived. Go through with what? Greetings. Greetings to you, White Wolf. Uh, I presume you saw my notice. <laughs> Foolish question. You're here, thus you must have seen it. Forgive me, I should introduce myself. Count Belladal, a great admirer of your deeds. Thanks. Not something we witchers hear often. But Count, sir, do you mean to go off with just this witcher? A right hardy fellow he is, no ponce, I'm sure. But your expedition's too risky on the whole. And not taking us with you, pardon my saying it, right daft. You exaggerate, Vilmar. I believe I can manage to survive half a day without someone there to wipe me arse in my stead. Hm. My guards lament, Witcher, but you must forgive them. Now, to get down to brass tacks, as you've no doubt gleaned from the notice, I've a rather extraordinary proposition for you. I'm a lover, Witcher, of nature. <laughs> a devotee of the wild. And Toussaint is home to several species not encountered elsewhere. I'd like you to accompany me on an expedition whose aim is to, uh, preserve them. <clears throat> ah, yes. Uh, naturally, you'll protect me should the need arise. My ever-vigilant guards, see, will report any reckless behavior to my wife if I get so much as a scratch. And then woe will be me. Huh, looks like his two guards are very loyal. <laughs> They don't want anything to happen to this guy, which I can very much respect. Good on you, lads. Okay, so um, first we should know who this guy even is and why he is so ex important. Count Belladol? Famous poultry farmer, is that it? <laughs> poultry <laughs> farmer. <laughs> well, that was my grandpapa. Dear man. But my trade is the wine trade. I import the finest vintages to Kavir, my homeland. The very reason for my frequent visits to Beauclair, uh, during which I like to uh, partake of nature, let us say. Really need a witcher to uh, partake? Got guards of your own, take them, save some coin. I could, surely. But they too deserve a bit of rest, relaxation. Right, lads? <laughs> Besides, I've plenty of coin. Coin that needs spending. Who dares stop me? Ah. So this is about a rich man, bored stiff, seeking thrills. There's also Clarissa, who... Vilmar, please. Who what? Uh, my daughter. I always return from my travels with some souvenir or another. She looks forward to them tremendously. <laughs> but uh, we did not meet to chat about my family. We must discuss our venture, must we not? Yes, we certainly must, but that's actually <laughs> very bizarre of him. He doesn't want to take his guards because he thinks his guards deserve a rest. I mean, eh, okay, but uh, I, I guess he's that kind of very benevolent lord. You know, he cares about his subjects. 
Um, so he decided to hire a witcher. All right, okay. <laughs> Let's see what this job Need is about. Some details before I can say anything. Where are we going? What am I supposed to do exactly? In the roundest terms, we shall admire the local flora and fauna. And while we do, I might preserve a thing or two. Preserve? Of this device, see? Uh, a parastysomac. It, uh, it captures uh, likenesses. A parasesta what? It's like a movable megascope, capturing moments, transforming them into illusions, based upon which I then paint a painting. So, you want me with you, looking at animals and flowers and... Well, that's more or less what it amounts to, yes. Uh, except you will first have to track down the creatures I wish to capture. I know only the very approximate locations of their habitats. Well, and uh, should any trouble arise, we'll have your sword at the ready, right? So, agreed. Okay, so I'm supposed to bodyguard this guy against ferocious creatures. It's not like we haven't done this kind of stuff before. But as always, we need to be paid for this kind of stuff. It's not exactly Witcher work, but um, hey, Geralt doesn't discriminate, so. Pretty unusual contract. I couldn't agree more, yes. And I'm prepared to pay a commensurately high fee. Don't mind if we actually talk about exactly how high that'll be first, do you? Why ever would I? Please, simply tell me how much you wish to receive. Hmm, okay, this better be high. Uh, okay, he goes up to almost 400 crowns. All right, it's not, it's not bad. I've seen better. I mean, for a famous poultry farmer or whatever he is, he should be providing me with more. Let's try three. You know what? I'd rather go higher than lower. Let's do like 330 to see what happens. Sublime. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I would have pushed him like too much higher. Okay, let's do this. Doesn't seem hard. Be glad to do something pleasant for a change. Sublime. In that case, here's your map. Before coming here, I dispatched requests to several local hunters. They located the habitats of the species of interest to me and marked out their ranges on the map. Good thinking. It'll save us some time. Won't need to track. Ready to go? Yes, let's. The light seems perfect just now. Nice. Drop by in a good time of day too. Oh my god, okay. That's a fancy contraption. <laughs> what he call it? I don't even remember what he called it. Per, per, like a Procrista mic? I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking of the uh, the thing that Yennefer gave us in Cairmorn. Procrastiquisitor or whatever. Uh, but no, this is not it. Okay, so check Count Bellows' map to find good spots on which to spot animals. Alright, well, we actually have to go into the inventory. Take a look at this map. Here it is. Um, where are we exactly? <laughs> are we on that big blood stain? Uh, whatever, I'm, I'm sure that game will tell me. Yeah, here we go. Seems I got the map, so I'll lead. Okay, actually several places we Wouldn't can go really and be out here with those guards of yours. <laughs> you jest. It's deliverance to emerge from under their wings, believe me. They're overprotective, uh, oppressively so. I wish to admire the wildlife, preserve it. Not watch them kill it in a fit of misguided fear for my life. What if the wildlife attacks us? Then we shall have no other recourse. I do not wish to be something supper. You but as long as they remain calm, we've no need to provoke them. It's, it's of the utmost importance to me, in fact. I don't think we need to provoke panthers for them to start attacking us. Map says there, there should that. be panthers around here. Deer, I think. Incredible. Sharp as a razor, you're hearing. Yeah, we can actually hear a couple of those just right there. Hear that? Panthers. Frankly, I did not hear a thing. Clearly, your senses are far more acute than mine. I must rely on them. Yep, we shall demonstrate right now. Come on, little panthers. Oh! They're uh, a little stuck here, it looks Damn like. poachers. Snares. Looks like they were hoping for a bear. Panther got caught instead. Look, a cub. Will you help the mother? Give it a shot. Gotta calm her first. Likely to lunge at us otherwise. Brilliant. You freeing her. A superb image. 
Okay, so I need to cast Axie on these. Oh, jeez. How do I even... There we go. <laughs> was that was that calming it? No, nah, I don't think so. All right. But if I just Folk call witches heartless. This will put the light to that. Oh my! I, I failed to warn you. Apologies. The Paris Dysimac has an added lantern. You must look away, or it'll blind you. Oh, no. oh boy. Oh, no. What have you done? What? you share my love for animals. There you go. I guess we just had to, to wait for it to attack us before using Axie. Okay. That's good. His uh Parasitomac <laughs> is just a fancy word for a uh a camera that you strap to your head. For a man of the city. I suppose I double in my share of things. Wine, nature, painting. I imagine the life of a witcher must be rather more monotonous, with all due respect. It is. Never boring, though. Uh, I, for one, cannot fathom only ever consorting with the same creatures, day in and day out. Got a wife? Y yes. What's that got to do with anything? <laughs> Nothing. Just asking. Consorting with the same creatures. Uh, that's a good one, Geralt. Oh, man. Okay. We're looking for giant centipedes. Oh dear. What does this guy think he's getting himself into here? <laughs> Shh. Hear him. It's those uh... centipedes. Giant. Underground tunnel burrowers. Make a distinct sound. We can use that to track them. How come we weren't able to ever do this before? Like when we're fighting actual giant centipedes. It would be very useful to hear where they're going underground. Sounds loud and clear here. Must be near the nest. We're here. Well, this vantage point's no good. I shan't capture a good image from here. All right, wait. We'll find you a better spot that's safe too. Tread lightly. Giant centipedes sense the softest sounds, the lightest vibrations. You wake one up. It wakes up angry. I don't think he's exactly asleep down there, given how fast it's moving. Uh, so there is a good vantage point here, I'm thinking. How about here? I, I don't know. Isn't it a bit close? Right. We'll find another spot. All right. So that one is a bit too close. <laughs> now he fears getting too close to these monsters. Uh, maybe up here then? I don't want to like start running around. Since Geralt did, did just mention something about the vibrations. Here, maybe. Distance seems right. Light's not bad either. Yes, this will work perfectly. Alright. Man, those things are moving really fast down there. Can you lure them out? Give me a minute. Need to think. Vibrations. Gotta send some through the ground. I'll try tossing a bomb or casting a sign. And you watch out. Don't get any closer. Alright, well, since our supply of bombs is not exactly the most abundant, let's uh, let's go ahead and do a, an art here. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, jeez. I was never a big fan of giant centipedes. Huh. Okay. Time to Put on a Yurden. Alright, here we go. Okay, so I'm guessing we don't actually have to kill them. Let's go! No, I don't want to kill them. Okay, there we go. They just go back. Oh, good. Thank you. Truly magnificent that was. We can move on now. Okay. Exhilarating. Positively exhilarating. Thank you. I've one more request. Local peacocks performing their mating ritual. I'd love to see that. Apparently, a flock dwells not far from here. We can go. Just don't count on peeping at them while they mate. Season ended a month back. Oh, that's terrible. I so wish to capture their splendorous tails in full bloom. 
Is there nothing you can do if they prove uneager to present? Perhaps challenge them somehow? Goad them? What did you have in mind? Don't have a tail myself, and I'm not likely to sprout one anytime soon. My thoughts were more along the lines of Witcher magic. They say you can exert influence over lesser creatures. Uh, yeah, guess I can try. Can't promise you anything, though. Splendid. Consider me contented. Uh, I cannot pinpoint the flock's location, but a hunter I know told me a few likely spots. I'll mark them for you. All right. Let's go find some peacocks. So he wants me to cast Axie on some peacocks. Oh boy. All right. There we go. Got some marks on the map there. I was wondering, why peacocks? My, my daughter is rather fond of them. There will be a treat for her. Hmm. There's a loving father for you. We're close. Eyes in the back of your head. <laughs> All he has to do is spin that camera thing on his head around, right? <laughs> and then he would literally have them on the back of his head. Oh, there's a one. Feather from the rump, coated in suet. Cock shed it recently, and the suet's got a distinct scent. Ought to be able to track the flock. A witcher in action. What a treat to watch. Okay, so we just gotta follow the smell here. Very faint, looks like, but I can pick up some of these feathers along the way. Um, they don't really weigh that much, so it's fine. I mean, they're literally feathers, right? Shh. Hear that? They're calling to each other. Fabulous. We're getting close. Yeah, it's like an entire flock of them. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, that's lovely. Now, if they could just splay the tails. See what I can do. Find a good spot. Ready! Use your magic, Witcher! Alright, so the game wants me to cast Axie <laughs> on some peacocks. Fine. Oh, that's not Axie. Hold on. Um, I actually have to select it here. I have it set up in my controls that I, I won't be able to cast Axie outside of combat. So I have to use my keyboard. There we go. Oh, look at that. Pretty. <laughs> We're lucky most of these are male peacocks. Nice. It's actually kind of cool. Oh, this will be a masterpiece. Smile, please. Oh, God. Yeah. Giant centipedes. Damn it. Where did they come from? Must have followed us. Get back. Oh boy. Okay. Looks like these centipedes want to go for round two. Um, I'm okay with that. As long as I don't mess this one up. Uh, sometimes they just don't get stunned by the Yurden for some reason. It's weird. Like they're clearly inside my Yurden. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I'm actually gonna die. Is it just one of them? I think it's just one. Alright. You shouldn't have followed us here. This could have ended differently. I didn't want to kill you. Oh, that guy like over now. snapped another picture. Whew, that was that was tense. Uh, I believe I've had my fill of excitement for today. All right. What a wonderful adventure! Get everything you wanted? Yes. In that case, time to get back to your camp. Well, that's a nice little expedition. Returning your lord to you, safe and sound. You've our gratitude, master. You see, lads? There was nothing to fear. Thank you, Witcher, for looking after our dear count. Seems the jaunt did him wonders. Breathed some new life into him. Wait here a moment, Geralt. I have to fetch my coin pouch. Pay my dues. Oh man. Okay, this guy is actually surprisingly honest. Okay, so we can say my pleasure. Well, not for you. Not your boss. Oh, okay. Yeah, new life. Something wrong before. Hmm. Not really sure what this is uh, supposed to mean. New life. 
He was feeling down? Made no mention, did he? Ten years back, his last Clarissa is her name. Took a spill off her horse. Been bedridden ever since. Cannot walk of her own. Ah, yes. She'd been the life of the house before the calamity. A merry sprite what filled every corner with joy. Count would oft take her out on trips. She loved animals too. Excursions he makes now. Or rather, paintings he brings home. There's her only window on the wider world. Sorry to make you wait. I was dead chuffed to be able to observe you in action. To confirm for myself there that the tales about you were not exaggerated in the slightest. You show discipline, reliability, responsibility. I dare say you'd make the ideal business associate. That's a shame you've no interest in the wine trade. One day, maybe. Your reward. Use it well. Thanks. I have one other matter I wish to broach. In a few days' time, I shall exhibit my work for some friends, my coterie, so to speak. Would you come by? You know what? I would be honored. Why not, if I'm in the area? Splendid. In that case, I shall see you at my lodgings. I'm staying with a friend while in Tucson, near a village named Frankola. I'll be by. See ya. Very good. Did we agree on 210 crowns? I can't believe I forgot already, but it feels like uh, it was supposed to be a bit more, like 290 or something? Or 250? I don't know. Who cares? It's not a big deal. Um, I got a letter from him, actually. Let's see. What does this say? Letter from the wife of Count Bellado. Why did he give me this? Everything here is good. For several days now, the sun has been shining and it's quite hot. So the window in Clarissa's room is open almost all day. If you could see her little face when rays of sunlight hit it, pure joy. She looks like she was bef she was before the accident. If it gets a bit warmer, I will have her chair taken to the garden. The day before yesterday, Master Boivard's wife, Elisa, visited us. You remember her, don't you? When the boy Vards moved into Covier, all the society ladies were scared of inviting her to dine, as she seemed to be either mad or some sort of self-taught witch. This was all because, despite not having the right education, she made magic ointments and cosmetics. It is said that she spent three years in the Dragon Mountains learning from some elven sorceress. Uh, you know I don't pay mu much heed to gossip, which is why when the butler announced her, I immediately invited her in for a glass of lemonade. It turns out that she is an exceedingly charming person, and stories of her alleged witchcraft are highly exaggerated. She actually studied for three years at Eratusa, but because of some bad investments made by her father, she had to leave the academy. She left, however, with good knowledge of plants and their magical applications. She brought with her a healing ointment, which I had to rub into Clarissa's legs each morning and evening for ten days. When the treatment is complete, Elisa promised, or maybe Eliza, promised to visit us again to see the results and advise us further. I have a good feeling about this woman. In my next letter, I'll tell you what happened with the treatment she recommended. Take care of yourself, my dearest. I beg that you don't overreact and do something silly. If something happened to you, I wouldn't know what to do. I love you, Arabella. Now, there is a loving wife. Okay, very good. Actually, there's a, another letter over here. Nothing to see here. A letter Move from on. the hunter. Huh. Is this one relevant? Distinguished Count, as you ordered, we have found out where the creatures of interest to you live. All the places are marked on the map attached to the package. Notwithstanding, I feel obligated to warn you against approaching any of the dwelling places without an experienced hunter or hunters and at least several weapons. In the month in which you intend to travel to the duchy, panthers are caring for their young, while centipedes are particularly active gathering stones, a store of fat tissue before winter. As head of the guild of local hunters and trackers, I recommend taking a guide from our organization. Please let us know if you're interested. I shall personally make sure that your escort is made up of the best and most experienced people. With expressions of these deep respect, Olivier de la Braga, Duchy of Tucson Guild of Hunters and Trackers. Huh. So he had like a whole bunch of hunters prepared to uh, escort this guy, but all he needed was a witcher. <laughs> Okay, here we have another one. Accounts ledger. Order for wine from Tucson. Baron Aron... Aronioni? <laughs> Two firkins of Estes, one firkin of Pomino. Note, if there's no Pomino, you can send uh, Amaris. Nobody will know the difference. Oh my. I don't even know what this Amaris is. Master Boivard, one firkin of Fiorano, three bottles of Evoluce. Take an additional demijohn of Evoluce for Master Boivard's wife as... Thanks for her magical ointment for Clarissa. 
that we just read about. Cool. And uh, Miss Lucinda, one firkin of Carvenir, and eight bottles of Vermentino, two demijohns of Coronada. Note, she hasn't paid for the last delivery yet. Oh, okay. Well, that's nice. I mean, um, this big game hunter quest is going to continue into this uh, picnic thing that he invited us to, which is pretty cool. I think we will uh, do that at another time. Well, whenever we have time, actually. So... Over here, I do see a, a alchemy shop. Where is this thing? Huh, it's like under the hill. Ah, ah here we go. Am I invisible? Excuse me, guys. Oh, man. No, there are actually people down here. <laughs> That's cool. My savior, my spider smasher. How might I be of service? Okay, so yeah, this is the guy I just helped out with... Um, in the uh, for the arachnomorphs, okay, the path. nothing so much long. to he see here, I guess. All right, then in that case, I think we will just end things here. Yeah, let me take a look here. Yeah, we got a whole bunch more places of interest up here, which we will do at uh, yeah at another time. I'm thinking, yeah, maybe finish up this. Big game hunter one, and then I really want to do this quest over here, the uh, the Belgard Wine Wars. This is a very involved side quest here in Tucson, and it actually has multiple endings, so it's very fun to do. Anyways, guys, uh, we're gonna end things here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.